ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. On the front cover of the April 27, 1998 Time magazine, there is a picture of a proposed uh, Omnicard. It looks like the American dollar squeezed down into plastic. And the main title on the Time magazine, The Future of Money, inside this magazine is an article on one world banking. And the questions are asked, what the big mergers mean? Are banks really necessary? And will Microsoft control it all? Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me one world banking. Ooh. And J.R., this is a biblical to topic, if there ever was a biblical topic. This topic runs all the way through the Bible. Uh, we, uh, we find an amazing correspondence between this article in Time magazine and what the Bible has to say about certain men whom it uh, deems as, quote-unquote, merchants. And when the Bible talks about merchants, it's really talking about uh, large-scale controlling entities, yes. controlling uh, goods, traffic and money such as the merchant bankers merchant bankers you know Gary this idea on the future of money is really ominous yes it is um, probably most of the folks who watched the news recently about the mergers of the big banks really don't understand the importance of it and on today's program we hope to be able to put it all into focus for you so that you can see where we stand in the scheme of things uh -huh. as the world is moving toward the development of the mark of the beast so stay with us this is very complicated and very important for you to understand Let's begin with what the article called the Big Bank Theory. That's kind of a <laughs> yeah. swing title there from yeah. the Big Bang Theory. From Big Bang Theory. Well, the banks are merging. And uh, they feature the work of one very dynamic man. His name is, uh, is Hugh McCall. And you may never have heard of him. He works behind the scenes to enact mergers. And uh, he's a banker by trade, stays behind the scenes. And back in the 60s, according to this article, McCall used to work for a bank, and he talked about the potential of banking at that time. And according to the article, when he did, he, quote, did not talk about money at all. He talked about power, end quote. And J.R., that's what all this is really about. Yes. It's, it's about power and control rather than money. Well, you know, the bankers are going to have to do something because there are people who've come out of the woodwork over the past generation uh -huh. who have become billionaires today, yes. namely Bill Gates and his types with computers uh -huh. and with tech, uh, technology industries that are really running off and leaving these bankers unless these bankers get a hold on things. That's right, and the bankers have the potential to do just that. I want to present just a few simple figures. For example, Citicorp Travelers, in the, in the recent merger you may have read about in the papers, uh, resulted in a, in a corporation of close to, within just a few dollars, of $700 billion. That's three quarters of a trillion dollars. Nations Bank, Bank America merged, or that is the merger is all but complete now, 572 billion, that's a half a trillion dollars. Chase Manhattan, 365 billion. JP Morgan, 262 billion. Bank One First Chicago, 230 billion. Together, JR, these total to about 2.2 trillion dollars in assets. That's on the positive side of the ledger, 2.2 trillion, as opposed to the United States of America, which has a negative balance of five trillion. In other words, the U.S. is five trillion in debt. These new corporate entities are 2.2 trillion on the plus side. Guess who's going to control what? Well, if you know, if you have that kind of money, how many presidents can you elect? <laughs> <laughs> Can every you single finance? every single one as a matter of fact That's right. and, and all of the politicians and by the way if uh, mr bill gates uh, and his uh, his technical geniuses come up with uh, ways of producing wealth and and they're suddenly rampaging out of control uh, and by the way are a threat 
to the this cabal of, of uh, power mad <laughs> multi all let's say multi trillionaires yeah the banking cartel the banking cartel if Bill Gates happens to be a threat to them guess what happens to Bill Gates squishing they squish him and mm -hmm. we may be witnessing that right now our government is going after him no long no no sooner do they complete one investigation till they announce the beginning of another investigation of Bill Gates and Microsoft and you know your head just spins why is the government going after this nice looking guy you know mm -hmm. seems so uh, laid back and easy to get along with and why is our government just chomp 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 chomping after him because he's just too big and it's all about power. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. It's not about money, although you can translate money figures into power. Now, in the world, the largest corporations are as follows. Citicorp Travelers, we mentioned $700 billion. The Bank of Tokyo, Mitsubishi, $648 uh, billion. S uh, the Swiss Bank, uh, Credit Suisse, is $595 billion. Deutsche Bank, Germany, 575 billion, and uh, Nations Bank, Bank America, 572 uh, billion. Add those all up, you come to a net worth of three, just a little over three trillion dollars. That's on the Amazing. plus side of the ledger, and this translates into power, authority, uh, kingmakers, people yes. who get people elected. Years ago, I used to think that the mark, the German mark, might have something to do with the coming mark of mm -hmm. the beast because of the similarities in the name. But you know, I heard a few days ago on the news that Germany's mark may be soon obsolete, just completely going out of ex existence as Europe, and especially Germany, opt for the euro currency, mm. the new European currency, which is coming in just a matter of weeks now. As this is really fascinating to live at this particular time in world history when the banking industry mm -hmm. is making such major changes. Now, when we've talked about one world currency in the past, we've talked about the currency of governments. <clears throat> United States currency has been held to high as a candidate, as JR said, the Deutsche Mark as, has been held high as a candidate, and then of late, the uh, uh, the EQ uh, of the European Currency Unit has been held high as a possible candidate for the universal money. But let's introduce a new topic here. And maybe it's none of the above. Mm -hmm. It could be private banking currency. Yes. E-cash is big, big, big. Electronic cash. Uh, and guess who would back that electronic cash? The international banking cartel. Yeah. And uh, I would suppose the credit cards and the various mm -hmm. bank cards that are uh, being uh, set up and established, creating money uh, mm -hmm. outside of and apart from uh, the United States dollar, mm -hmm. that all they have to do is change the name of it whenever they get ready to, you know. Sure. Now, uh, after the uh, stock market crash of 1929, our politicians put together some restraints upon banking. For example, they said, no branch banking allowed. And they said, we're going to have state banks as well as national banks. But you know, Gary, they got rid of the state banks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, they did. And they're putting branch banking up everywhere, here around Oklahoma City, almost on every corner, and more banks than there are sir, filling stations. <laughs> and that's <Here>. a truth. <laughs> it could be, JR, that electronic cash could replace your paper cash, <clears throat> your credit cards, your ATM card, your ID card, such as your little social security card, mm -hmm. uh, even maybe your driver's license. Your insurance card could be replaced, because let's, let's face it, uh, these bank mergers also include insurance company holdings and even your very life. The mortgage on your home, yeah. on your vehicle, perhaps even college tuition. Everything rolled into one card, your whole life. And the time uh, writers say, enter electronic cash. The idea of digital money is simple enough. Instead of storing value on paper, find a way to wrap it in a string of digits. And then they add, for starters, you can send money over the internet encoded in an email uh, instead of sending a check. This saves you the trouble of balancing a checkbook at the end of the month. And they go on and, and, the, and they say, and I'm quoting, your daughter can store the money any way she wants. On her laptop computer, on a debit card, even in the not too distant future, 
on a chip implanted under her skin. And I'm quoting Time Magazine. That's incredible. <laughs> That's incredible stuff. <laughs> Next year, goose pimples pop up all over you. Oh, you know? it does, JR. If you understand what the Bible has to say about the end time, if you understand what the prophets have said, and this matter of eschatology, the doctrine of last things, knowing that the next millennium is just around the corner, Gary, mm -hmm. this is really great stuff when it's, you get uh, down to it for the believer in Christ, for the Christian to know that the devil and his um, machinations, his planning is preparing the world for the mark of the beast. And when you talk about these wealth accounts, which we're going to talk more about in just a moment, we're really talking about a person enslaved. Absolutely. To the no question. We'll be back in just a moment. The framers of our Constitution gave total control of issuing currency to our Congress. However, in recent years, merchant bankers have begun to make inroads into the ability of our nation to issue its own currency. With the establishment of the Federal Reserve System back in the early years of this century, we can see the international banking cartel taking over control of money. We still have United States currency written upon our dollar bills. However, one of these days there is a possibility that the banks themselves will issue their own money. In fact, this article says that much, doesn't it, mm -hmm. Gary? It really did. It does. It's, it talks about uh, the fact that, that because of their net worth, the money that they would print would actually be backed by a, 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 a more solid and stable net worth than that uh, printed by our own government. Especially so, if our national debt was five trillion dollars <laughs> and they have a couple mm -hmm. of old two and a half trillion sitting in mm -hmm. the vault. Yeah, which one would you rather have? <laughs> back to the, I think I'd rather have the money backed by like two and a half trillion dollars. And I have a feeling, Gary, that it was planned <clears throat> this way. You know, they didn't yeah. just say, oh, look at that. Well, you poor politicians, you've done a bad job of, uh, of governing, and uh, meanwhile, we've been astute mm -hmm. in our uh, banking system, and uh, uh, Gary, it smells. It really yeah. smells. As a matter of fact, this is where the future meets the past, because as you study the Bible, you often discover that you can go back into ancient history and discover the foundation of something you see today, and thus it is with banking. Uh, we, in the story of uh, Hiram, king of Tyre, we find the original merchant, vastly wealthy man. He had ships running all over the civilized world. They would sail around the Mediterranean. They would sail out the, through the uh, Straits of Gibraltar, as they're called today, up to uh, as far north as northern Europe uh, and uh, the, the Baltic areas, uh, as far south as Africa, all the way east <clears throat> around India and China, Malaysia, and even as far west as uh, North and South America. There are records of Phoenician trading ships from Tyre even sailing up the Amazon to what is now Peru today. And so uh, the king of Tyre had a merchant fleet running everywhere and because he had this fleet, he had to master a system of accounting. Uh, because you got enormous quantities of grain and oil and wine and everything you can have, silk, you name it, glass, gold, silver, and you've got to keep an account of it some way. And so this mercantile system was developed back in yes. the days of Solomon by the king of Tyre. And Solomon wrote to the king of Tyre and asked him, that, he said, I, would, I, I need some uh, cedars uh, from Lebanon cut down, mm -hmm. and uh, I need this and that and the other in order to build the temple. Mm -hmm. And, hi and he, he essentially said, Hiram, how much you want? And Hiram said, well, we'll figure this in grain instead of gold. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so he knew that they needed grain instead of gold at that particular time, and that was the price he set upon it. He was very sharp business a businessman he was called merchant banker <coughs> a merchant banker and as a matter of fact when you begin to study merchants in the old testament uh, and we don't have time to touch upon them all but maybe the best place to start is ezekiel 27 the whole chapter is a, a lamentation by the prophet 
against the king of Tyre because of his greed, because of his, uh, the desire of he and his progeny to control the lives and the wealth of men with whom they traded. And so Ezekiel makes these merchants of Tyre and ha mm -hmm. the offspring of Hiram and his right. uh, um, merchant banking system mm -hmm. a type of the future Mystery Babylon. Exactly, and, and when, when you come to Ezekiel 25, uh, 27, 25, you have this. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, and thou wast re replenished and made very glorious in the midst of the seas. But they are the end of it. It comes at the end of verse 27. Uh, in that day you shall fall in, into the midst of the seas, the day of thy Ruin. Speaking of the final collapse of the system of merchant banking, and we read about that in Revelation 18. Now, so, yeah, a few years later comes along Jezebel. Yeah, about what? To put 49, 50 years after Hiram. Yeah, about uh, let's say 50 years after Hiram, uh, we have a the story uh, of a weak king, Ahab, son of Omri, who was an evil king. And Ahab was a spineless, uh, I guess in the parlance of the 20th century, we'd call him a man of no integrity, a gutless wonder. And he wanted to build his palace, his ivory palace in Samaria, and he didn't have the nerve or the money, but he, he did have one thing. He knew the king of Tyre. He knew that whole family. And he arranged a marriage with the daughter of Ethbaal, who was a son, a great, great, great grandson of the king of Tyre. Jezebel was her name. She was a powerful woman, wealthy. She was a priestess of uh, Astarte. That is, she was a, a priestess of the fertility goddess cult. And she brought with her enormous wealth tied to Tyre. And so the kingdom of Ahab and Jezebel becomes really a model, J.R., for... Yes this kind of uh, merging of government with banking. It's interesting that in the book of the Revelation, Jezebel seems to capture the world. She becomes the uh, type of the future mystery Babylon yes. and eventually is thrown into great tribulation, exactly as the scripture puts it. Well, we have the story of Hiram and Jezebel. It's kind of interesting that the modern banking cartel, worldwide banking cartel, uh, appears to be the ultimate uh, fulfillment of these mm -hmm. ancient people. And one of the interesting things about today's uh, banking and today's currency is that it is moving toward not just banking, but merchandising. Exactly. Uh, you, you remember <clears throat> back uh, the RTC back in the 1980s when uh, uh, so many... Um, savings and loans would belly up. That's right. And they took over the various buildings. Well, they didn't want to keep the buildings, so they sold them off for pennies on the dollars. And uh, uh, the interesting thing about it is this future banking is going to market these buildings. In other words, uh, it's not just going to be a banking system and we're, we're just strictly mm -hmm. bankers and we don't get involved in merchandising. Uh, I think people mm -hmm. like Bill Gates and uh, the new billionaires of this, of, of this generation have caused these people to rethink their situation. Uh, indeed, and we have here a statement of this Time article uh, concerning a vision of future finance, if, which would include the mortgage you hold on your house, mm -hmm. the items you've charged on your credit card. Uh, it would be a super portfolio of your entire life called a wealth account, not simply to be understood uh, as, a, as money or a stock or a bond, but an instrument, as they say, designed to match your financial needs with the available options. In other words, yes. your wealth would become their management. Yes. Now, you know, Gary, in the past, up until today, a man can mortgage a car, mm -hmm. and if he defaults, only the car is taken. Mortgage his house, if it defaults, only the house is taken. Right. But under this new system proposed in this Time Magazine article, Gary, if you default on one thing, they can take everything you've got right down to the socks out of your bureau drawer. Indeed. <laughs> and put you out on the street. Talk about slavery. It is, That's incredible. It's enslavement to a system of 
power. And don't forget that uh, Hugh McCall, one of the engineers of this system, said it's not really about money, it's about power. And you know, when you read Revelation 18 and this whole list of things, uh, by the way, that are bought and sold by the merchants of Tarshish in their final state, they, are, they sell everything from gold and wood and silver and precious stone to the souls of men. Wow. Now that's that's it says what it all, doesn't it? It says it all. In other words, they mm -hmm. own you lock, stock, and barrel. Mm -hmm. How soon is this coming? It's coming soon enough for you and I, if we, if if we, um, shall we say, for those who are not saved, in our lifetime, it's just around the corner. 